Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you want in the body and mind you want. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of freedom with food and your body, you're in the right place. Just a reminder that this podcast represents my own opinions. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for educational and informational purposes only. Please consult your doctor or healthcare professional for any individual medical questions you may have. Hi, everyone. Hope you are all doing great today. Thanks for listening today. Glad you're here and glad we get to share this space together. Today, we are going to talk about um, a specific disordered eating pattern. Disordered eating can include anything from binging, um, emotional eating, secret eating. When, one of the reasons I wanted to create an episode about this is because for many people who suffer with any of these issues, it, it's very shameful and um, feels very shameful. And that's mostly because we don't talk about it. It's just not talked about very often. But the truth is many, many people suffer with disordered eating patterns. And I do believe the more we talk about it and bring it out into the light, the more people can heal um, from these disordered eating patterns um, and this kind of relationship with food. If you struggle with any kind of disordered eating, you understand the inherent shame and sadness and frustration that goes along with it. The, the feelings of how desperately you want to stop but just can't or if you've had a day or two or a week of not engaging in disordered eating, to have the same pattern come back again and you're back in that cycle again can be incredibly frustrating and devastating. And there's just also so much shame um, that food has so much control over your entire life. Uh, So here are some signs and symptoms of of disordered eating. And I'm going to list some, but this list is definitely not conclusive. Um, So some things might be frequent dieting and anxiety associated with specific foods or meal skipping. Uh, Could be things like chronic weight fluctuations, rigid rituals and routines surrounding food and or exercise, feelings of guilt and shame associated with eating, preoccupation with food, weight, and body image that negatively impacts your quality of life, a feeling of loss of control around food, including compulsive eating habits, uh, using exercise or food restriction or fasting or purging to you know make, make up for bad foods, that you've eaten. So there are many negative consequences of disordered eating patterns that go way beyond the obvious of physical issues like weight gain and metabolic issues and health issues. Disordered eating has a huge impact on our mental and emotional health as well. I'm going to focus on one type of disordered eating pattern today. Um, And this is secret eating, which secret eating is also a part of emotional eating. So if you believe you are an emotional eater, this episode will be helpful for that, even if you have not um, or don't secret eat. So tell me if you can relate to this. You go out with friends for a nice um, meal at a restaurant and you order a salad but when you leave, you stop and go through a drive through and overindulge as soon as you get home or even in the car on the way home. Uh, or you have dinner with your family and uh, you're bringing the plates into the kitchen to clean up and you're throwing away the extra food left on the plates, but you're also eating a bunch of it. Or you have a really hard day at work and you kind of keep it together through sheer will in the evening, like just keeping it together, holding on, waiting until you can be alone in your bed with the TV and a big quart of ice cream or a bag of chips. Um, 
These are scenarios that we call secret eating. When I say secret eating, here is exactly what I mean. You have the intention to hide what you're eating or how much you're eating. So it's done alone. And when you do it, it feels like you have something to hide. It doesn't feel like you're eating in a natural state. It doesn't feel relaxed. It can often um, feel, you know, the word that comes to mind is like frantic. Uh, Many of us do more secret eating when we are feeling strong negative emotions like anger, sadness, defeat, stress. And secret eating is really not about the food. You may ask yourself things like, why can't I just be myself and eat what I really want without worrying what others will think? Why can't I take care of my stress and pain with hugs and conversations instead of with food? And we're going to discuss secret eating, why you eat in secret, what it could mean, and how to get rid of the habit. And if you can relate to secret eating, you know how horrible it can make you feel, how full of shame and regret. So it is really one of those types of disordered eating patterns that it's important to start to work on and start to shift so you can get out of those feelings of shame and regret. Most of the clients I work with, and I also thought this for a while, but they assume to become a normal eater in quotation marks, and stop the disordered eating patterns, the first step they need to change is their behavior. So so this is what many of us often think has to happen first. We just have to change, change what we're doing, change our behavior. So if you're an emotional eater, you eat when you feel feelings to either create a new, better feeling, or you eat to stop feeling a negative feeling momentarily. So emotional eating is eating to change a feeling state. Emotional eating is eating to change a feeling state. So to become a normal eater, again in quotation marks, normal eater, one needs to forever stop eating emotionally. Or if you binge eat, it's that you need to stop binging or secret eating. You know, these thoughts that I will never be a normal eater unless all of this stops completely. Um... Really, the truth is healing from disordered eating patterns does not work this way. So no human in the throes of disordered eating can just stop the behavior or just quit. It is just not how it works. And that may, you know, you can just quit or just stop a behavior for a while. Many of us can do that for a while. So just through, you know, just true discipline and, um, you know, trying to set this goal and making it happen and white knuckling it, but it works for a while or can work for a while, but it does not last. So the first step in healing from a disordered eating pattern, secret eating in this case of what we're talking about, is all about working on your thoughts, your mind, and your emotions. And this proves true for all disordered eating patterns. So it's not all about food. It's everything that is going on in your mind. You may be thinking things like, I should eat this or I shouldn't eat this much. Because you're having those thoughts, you secret eat to be able to eat the thing you believe you shouldn't be eating to you know, get away with it. If you step back and look at this behavior, we know we're not really getting away with it, but our brains in the moment Twist the message so that when we secret eat, it feels like we're getting away with something. Secret eating can even give you a little thrill, like a little high, but it doesn't last. An occasional episode of secret eating is pretty normal, but if you find it's a pattern and you do it often, then there's something else going on. So let's look at the deeper issues of the mind that might be happening to create the habit of secret eating. And it is a habit, and we'll talk about that. Awareness and understanding, as always, (laughs) probably sick of me saying that, but awareness and understanding are the first steps to making changes to our behavior. So here are some things I've heard from past clients about secret eating. I think it just doesn't count. When I eat in secret, it feels like it doesn't count. It's a reward. 
and others can't see me doing it. The outside world thinks I'm perfect with food. I love when people tell me, you never indulge or you eat like a rabbit. These comments make me feel so good because in a way it gives me an excuse for being overweight. Others must see my weight and they must think how I eat and drink. She must have a slow metabolism or a thyroid problem. She must have a health issue because she's overweight, but she eats so healthy when we go out. It explains away my weight problem without having to take responsibility for my actions. So she's thinking things like this. I'm not sure I deserve a treat while I still need to lose weight. So I'm not confident eating this treat in front of others. I'm uncomfortable with what others think. When I eat in secret, my friends only see me eating hardly anything. Then they are sympathetic to my weight issue. This kind of lets me off the hook. I don't have to be responsible for my own overeating. I'm not only tricking others, but in a way I trick myself as well. I've come to believe my own story around this. I can tell myself that, that, that my weight is not within my control. She's also still looking at foods as good or bad. And that very, very detrimental black and white thinking around food. So when I eat good foods, I think to myself, I am good. And when I eat bad foods, I believe that I am bad. So you see how that black and white thinking around food, telling yourself the story that some foods are good and some foods are bad, it sets us up for letting food make the judgment about our goodness or our badness, like who we are as people. You know, it's really, if you step back and look at it, There's some ridiculousness in that, right? That we would allow food to judge us as good or bad. It's why it is so important to look at all food as food, not defining it in thoughts or speech as good or bad. Anyway, in secret eating, it is often done with foods we consider bad, which then makes me feel bad or that I'm a bad person. And here's another one I've heard a lot And also one I can relate to, I am not at ease around food. I struggle in social situations anyway, and I rarely will eat in social situations, but because I restrict myself in these social situations, when I get home, I cave and I eat all the things when no one is around. And this gets into restriction mentality, which, you know, is brought up, I swear, almost in every episode I've put out there. And it always, always backfires when we restrict. So, you know, this can get a little into people pleasing or perfectionism, you know, wanting to appear perfect in front of others. I really care about what others think of me. So I present myself as really confident eating carefully in front of others, but then at home I make up for it. You know, I let all things fly. So this is a habit. We can get into this habit of being very careful and controlled around others. And remember, due to the thought, you know, things like I want them to like me or not to judge me, and then really letting loose when you're alone. So now the behavior and thought of being so careful around food when others are there triggers the response later on of eating all the things in secret. And so now those two things are linked in a habit. And so the one always follows the other. Uh, Some have these thoughts. Some people have these these thoughts. I'll only enjoy this food if I'm in my bed watching TV, or I'll only enjoy this food if I'm alone. To sit with others and eat this food is just not enjoyable. But then all I feel afterwards, after I do this, after I eat the food alone and all that is shame and regret. So for this client, it may be he wants all the pleasure food can give him, Being with others is distracting for him and this pleasure. He feels shame afterwards because he knows this is not how natural eating should occur. The food is still the same food, but it's it's the same when you eat it. So it is the same when you eat it alone as well as when you eat it with others. But now there's this habit of thought, a habit of believing it is only pleasurable when he is alone. And this thought is now linked to things maybe like cuddling up in bed, which is very comforting, and watching TV, which is very entertaining while eating. So now the food is surrounded by even more pleasure, comfort of being in bed and feeling entertained while watching TV, but because you're doing it secretly, you know it's something you don't really want to be doing. And here's one more. 
When you are used to overeating, you are used to feeling overly full on a regular basis. And when you eat with friends and you eat in a modest way, you don't get that overly full feeling and your brain sends up signals that something's wrong. It doesn't release the satiation hormones because it's been trained to only do that when you overeat. Your body may have had enough, but you tell yourself you haven't had enough because you aren't getting the same feeling you get when you overeat. You didn't eat the amount you are used to and so you make up for it as soon as you are home and alone or in the car and alone this is where your brain is sending you the message you've restricted so now it's taking you into overeating and eating fast when you are alone to create that overly full sensation if you can relate to any of these examples you may also relate to some of these things eating a whole bag of cookies or chips that you didn't plan to, and then you feel shame, so you hide the empty package at the bottom of the garbage, or you take a tiny taste of a donut that's in the office lounge, but then you stop at the bakery on the way home and have six donuts down before even getting home. Or maybe you hide food or what you're eating if someone starts to walk in on you. Maybe your choice of what to order is influenced what by what everyone else is getting at the table, so you don't get what you actually really want, and so then you make up for it later when you're home alone. Okay, so things that we've covered, good or bad food thinking, the black and whiteness around whether a food is good or bad, that can really trigger a lot of secret eating. If you care about, if you care a lot about what others think of you, that can create secret eating. You're trying to live up to some expectation, unrealistic, high standard perfectionism. That can trigger secret eating. Not being honest with yourself can trigger secret eating. Not paying attention when eating. So eating fast or while driving or standing up. When we don't pay attention, when we're not mindful, we don't get the same satisfaction that we are actually looking for from our food. So when you know, you're almost... Um, you almost are desperate to give yourself that sense of satisfaction. And so you will overeat when you are alone uh, to give yourself that. You, you might have thoughts like, I shouldn't eat this, or this is bad or forbidden, or I can't have it, so I have to hide it. Uh, it could also stem from not getting enough pleasure in your own life. So secret eating gives you that pleasure. Re- remember how behaviors work. We have a thought, that thought creates a feeling which has a sensation, that chemical cocktail attached to it that flows through our body, that goes along with the feeling, and then that is what propels us into a behavior. So secret eating is a behavior. It is propelled by feelings of restriction, deprivation, not feeling good enough, so that means unworthiness. And also fear, you know, fear of being judged by others. And and these feelings are all triggered by thoughts like, I shouldn't eat this, or I can't have it, or it's a bad food, or people will judge me if I eat this, or people won't like me if they see how I really want to eat, etc. So the thoughts are where we need to go first uh, to shift this behavior. So here are some thoughts that you can practice that help curb secret eating. And, you know, with all of these, you just have to try one on. You can come up with your own too, but these are examples. You can try one on, see how it makes you feel. You know, not everything fits for everyone, but here are some ideas. I am worthy to eat what I want to eat. Others are busy paying attention to themselves. They are not thinking about me or judging me. I am not perfect. No one is perfect and trying to be perfect has not served me. I can enjoy eating the food I really want with others. This is a beautiful way to share a communal experience and it will make me feel peace and contentment. If I am hungry, I will eat. I will eat as close to that hunger even when I am out with others. I do not hide my eating. If I am hungry, I can eat wherever I am and with whoever I am with. I need to be honest with me. If I wouldn't eat this much in front of others, then eating this much with me, secret eating, is also not okay for me. And if it's not okay for me, then I need to work to stop the habit. 
And if these are two uncomfortable thoughts to practice, then put the words I am figuring out in front of each one. So example, I'm figuring out how to feel worthy to eat what I want to eat. I am figuring out how to believe others are busy paying attention to themselves and not me. I am figuring out how to believe it's okay not to be perfect. Practicing thoughts like this are going to bring on feelings of more determination, more confidence, and more willingness, like I discussed in the past episode. And these are all the feelings we want to create, we want to conjure up to get us to shift behaviors. If you think secret eating may be due to not getting enough pleasure in your life, and so that secret eating is the only time you experience pleasure, then one way to work through this is to create more pleasure for yourself in everyday life. I can give you a really personal example on this one. I loved to secret eat for years. There was something about being alone with food that gave me such a feeling of relaxation, of pleasure. And by the way, I have done my work on this one and can tell you my habit of secret eating definitely came from not having that close relationship that I so desperately wanted for years after my divorce with someone. So I'm I'm sure many of you can relate Either because you've been through a divorce and understand that intense loneliness for years can follow um, that divorce brings on. And I'm personally, I'm also a huge introvert. So I've always had a tough time establishing new relationships. But many of you who are in marriages or long term partnerships can also relate um, because many people in a marriage uh, that is not so healthy can also carry with it huge feelings of loneliness. So anyway, secret eating became the one thing that brought me pleasure. When I realized this and started doing some work on this to understand why I was doing this, learning that this was my only source of pleasure was a big wake-up call for me. I pretty immediately worked on figuring out some other things I could bring into my daily life to bring about pleasure and relaxation So things that I tried, I implemented baths every day for 10 to 20 minutes at a time. Um, I tried a couple other things too, but the one thing that really worked, and by the way, this is just me personally. Everyone has to find something or things that work for them. But the one thing that really clicked for me was reading a book I loved every evening for at least 30 minutes. And... um, I did find too, it actually didn't work so well if I gave myself only 10 minutes. So I, I even uh, worked with the how much time I needed. But, but when I made that 30 minutes of reading a good book to myself, um, something it was something I could look forward to every day, you know, at the end of my day. And my secret eating behavior became less reinforcing because I was cultivating contentment, relaxation, and pleasure every day. And so that need to find pleasure from food through secret eating became less reinforcing in habit. Um, And I still have kept that pleasure of reading every evening in my life. It has become this really wonderful part of my day. And another quick point here, if you try this strategy, not not necessarily reading, but whatever behavior you're going to try to create um, for more pleasure for yourself, I would strongly recommend it be something you can do daily. So for example, not just a monthly massage or something like that. It's about finding something pleasurable and doable daily. Things like time to read, a bath, just time to yourself to sit and do nothing, a nap, um, etc. So food, drink, secret eating is a false pleasure. It's a false pleasure because the, although it gives pleasure in the moment, secret eating usually after it's over, but almost always eventually brings feelings of regret, shame, and thoughts that create more feelings of wanting to secret eat or use food to get out of the feeling of regret and shame. So again, we, you know, the same thing we talk about a lot, it creates that vicious cycle of overeating or secret eating to change feeling states. The habit of secret eating reinforces our belief that something is wrong with us. Um, So creating daily pleasure for ourselves helps to make us more willing to shift the secret eating behaviors. Okay, so here is the list of exactly what to do if secret eating is an issue for you. First one, ask yourself why you are secret eating. Get really honest and clear with yourself so you have an understanding 
Um, and, and I would, as always, strongly suggest you journal on this, actually writing out your questions and responses. Um, practice new thoughts like the examples I gave. Try on a few. See what ones create more feelings of willingness for you. And then finally, write out a list of five daily behaviors that might bring pleasure for you that you think maybe it could. Pick one and try it for a week. If that one doesn't bring some pleasure, try the next one on your list for a week. These strategies will most likely not change things overnight. Remember, for most of us, secret eating is a habit, and so it takes time to change a habit. But I promise you that it can happen, and when it does, it is so worth it. You come to a place of feeling free, a healthy, thriving relationship with yourself, and the life you want to live in the body you want to live in. I hope you found something useful in this episode. Secret eating is a very shameful topic for many of us. So I hope my personal examples and sharing some examples of past clients' issues help you to understand you are not alone and that bringing this behavior into the light for yourself and beginning to work on it is absolutely worth it. Let me know via email if you try any of these strategies. And also, if you do decide you need some um, deeper or more coaching or counseling, more help with behaviors like these, the best way to reach me is through my website at heatherheinen.com. And Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. Really appreciate it. If you take time to subscribe to this podcast, download the episodes. Um, You could leave a five-star review if you're so inclined. Uh, When you do this, you'll be sure you get every new episode when it's released. Sorry, that was my cat. Um, If you've already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting the podcast. And I really appreciate those of you who share these episodes with family um, members or friends who you think um, could could help or be beneficial to, um, or maybe... uh, you know, you send these to someone who you know has a kiddo who's struggling uh, with these sorts of issues. Um, you know, the reason I'm putting all this stuff out there is that, you know, I do work with, I mean, it's my job to work with clients one-on-one through issues like these. But I do know for many people who either, you know, can't afford some of these things or just not sure if, um, you know, working with someone or paying someone and working with someone would be helpful. These this podcast for me is really a way of putting myself out there and hopefully giving out some very valuable information for free. So anyway, passing it along um, really does help me keep this platform rolling, the information on this platform rolling. Uh, So again, you can head over to my social media for some other resources. Instagram is Heinen Counseling and Coaching, H-E-Y-N-E-N. Again, is how you spell Heinen. It's a weird last name. Um, Once you're there, feel free to direct message me, comment on a post with any questions you may have about all things weight loss, wellness, optimizing health, nutrition, thought work, etc. I also have a recipes only page on Instagram. Uh, Lots of just free recipes. They are all right there. You do not have to click on links to get to my website to get the recipes. It's just right there on Instagram, peak protein recipes, peak is spelled P-E-A-K. And if you click on a picture that interests you, you will get the full recipe right under the description. Um, All those recipes are high protein. Uh, If you know anything about me, you know I am a huge protein proponent. If you keep listening right now, you're going to get some more information on how my clients take a deeper dive on all these topics with me through online programs and coaching. It's where you get the actual structured lessons, worksheets, journal prompts, support and coaching behind all this information I'm putting out there to lose your weight for good, improve your health, and live the life you've been dreaming about in the body you've been dreaming about. I hope you are finding something useful from these episodes and this podcast. And if so, please share it with someone else in your life you feel it could benefit. This podcast is also now monetized. So if you really feel you are getting a lot from it and want to help keep it going, please go to the episode show notes. You can just scroll down from wherever you're listening. You'll see a description of the episode And then you will see it says support this podcast. And then there's a link you can click on. 
You can click on that link and that's where you can support the podcast. Even the smallest donation, like 99 cents, helps to keep me producing the podcast. And to those of you who have donated, I really, really appreciate the support. I really do appreciate all of you listening and sharing the space with me. Again, just very thankful for all of you. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And get in touch with questions on all things I offer, like online courses for overeating, weight loss, goal attainment, and also my coaching and counseling services.